Welcome to Marriage Moments. Uh, my name is Pastor Anthony Dagner, and this is my lovely wife, co-pastor Shelly Dagner. Um, God has impressed upon the woman of God this vision um, of taking time and having various segments um, to be real and be transparent um, and to be able to minister to as well from the word and giving uh, spiritual as well as practical tips. Um, co-pastor and I are very passionate uh, about marriage. Um, we have a true desire to see marriages be all that God has called them to be. Uh, we've been blessed to be married for 23 years, and so we Amen. praise God for that as well. Amen. Um, and so, co-pastor, uh, tell us what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about PG1, Put God First. Amen. Pastor and I, as he said, you know, we've been together uh, 23 years married, and we've been ministering, whether it's marriage ministry, whether it's marriage counseling. And I would always focus on like, what are the practical things? What are the principles we can give to people? Wow. And pastor would always say, but you know, God first, you know, God first. And you know, he said, you know, if, if you don't have God first, you can't do these other things because you would be doing them in the arm of the flesh. That's good. So we always focus on what does the word say? And I know for me, hearing the word, when the word says respect, you know, wives are to respect their husbands. It's in the word. I saw it for myself. When we look at each other and you're looking at them like that's God's son, like that's, that's God. God's man of God. That's God. Um, and treating them as such and loving them like God loves them. And so making sure your marriage is, is the foundation of it. Everything that you do, right. it's based on the word and inviting the Holy Ghost in to your marriage because the Holy Ghost will assist you. The Holy Ghost will tell you, be quiet, shut your mouth. Uh, one of the examples Pastor and I have actually shared in our marriage is um, years ago we were having a disagreement and my flesh was like, say this, that'll get them, say this. And the Holy Spirit said, don't say anything. And I shared that with him later um, you know, after the discussion was over and he was sharing with me as he was going up the steps, the Holy Spirit was telling him the same thing. Like, just be quiet. Don't say anything. And that was one of the first encounters in our marriage where we had both begun to submit so much to God that yeah. we could hear the Holy Ghost yeah. and respond and know when not to respond. Any, That's good. Anything That's you want to add there, Pastor? Um, and I know, you know, people may be saying, you know, hey, you know, I understand, put God first. Right. You know, it, it sounds, you know, easy or it right. sounds like this is the right thing to do. Um, but this takes, a, it takes a work. It takes a yielding. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken and said uh, before that I feel like co-pastor uh, benefits from my yeah. relationship with the Lord. Um, of course, we could tie it into other things, but since this segment is dealing with uh, relationships and marriage, mm -hmm. uh, we'll just use that aspect. Um, that it's, uh, you know, when you have a desire to, to please God, when you have a desire um, and honor and a reverence for God, um, and as co-pastor said, that when you, it's kind of seeing the individual through uh, God's eyes. Amen. And so it brings a different level of honor, I believe. I believe it brings uh, a different level of respect yeah. um, when you truly start to see your spouse as, as God sees them, as God's child. And so, uh, again, it is, it's making sure that whatever you do, because again, in those moments, um, as co-pastor shared one uh, instance with us, you know, when when the enemy, of course, wants to come in and to, to divide that right. union, right. Um, to cause confusion and, and wreak havoc in the house. Right. Right. And so he understands if he can get in the union, um, he can start to tear down that household. And so we have to be uh, wise and understanding that, you know, when, when, when the flesh is designed to, to rise up um, in certain situations and circumstances, that we have to pause in those moments and really allow, okay, I know the Holy Ghost is in me and working me. Okay, let me let the Holy Ghost, but also too, you know, what does the word say? Uh, you know, for men, you know, the word tells us about not being bitter and not being harsh, right. you know, towards our wives. And so it's in those moments that we have to allow that to be in the forefront um, and truly yielding ourselves to God's desires and his Amen. will. Amen. And uh, 
we our flesh is always ready like our flesh is always ready to mm. respond mm. the way we used to respond That's good. um pastor said this to me gosh I, I don't even remember when but he was like anything you did pre-salvation before you were saved you're capable mm. of doing again and I, i'll be honest i was <laughs> hot uh i think that was probably the first time i might have went to bed upset because i was just like no I, I cannot and he was like no, you, you're capable because your flesh didn't forget. And I want to say, we just kind of let it go. I kind of said like, okay, um, all right. Okay. There, there's a possibility. And I want to say years later, I really received that revelation that, and I mean, honestly, it wasn't that difficult to understand because your flesh doesn't get saved. Mm -hmm. And so you do have that capability and you'll find yourself it shows up when you're in a disagreement or you're in a discussion and everything that you used to want to say and do is still readily available to you. That's good. It can still come to your mind, but it's like, how am I going to choose to respond? Am I going to let, am, am I going to follow my spirit That's or am good. I going to follow my flesh? And so when you understand, yes, I'm capable of going slam off. Mm. But I'm going to choose not to do that. And understanding that only happens when you are in relationship with God. That right. only happens when you are spending time with God. That only happens when you're submitted to God. That's and good. you will know. I That's mean, good. if we all be real, That's good. let your time with God be shorter than normal. And you will notice, hmm, I'm acting a little more crazy than I normally would. And maybe <laughs> you're not out the box crazy but like hmm i'm 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 more easily getting out of character that's good so that coming in with god that spending time praying for each other that's good you know praying together you know praying you know god help me be a better wife that's and good. again when we're praying for each other and i like pray lord fix him that's good god get fix him please or fix her yeah or fix her it's I'm praying, you know, for the things that, you know, they need in, in a sense of, you know, things that they're believing for or love that I'm going to appreciate them, you That's know, good. for forgiveness, but praying more than we're complaining That's about good. our spouse That's um, is, is so key. And, and pastor and I pray together. Now we pray, we purpose to pray together each night. We're not saying, Hey, you must pray together each night. One of the things that it does to help pastor and I when you come together in prayer, That's if good. there is anything, we, we used to find that when it's like, okay, let's come together in prayer. If there was anything that may have been bothering us, but we didn't really share it that day, it was like, it wasn't even big, big enough deal to talk about. It That's is, good. it's aired out because we want to go and, and come together as one. So a lot of times because we come together in prayer, yeah. we get to air out even little things that the enemy would like us to just keep inside and and cause like bitterness and resentment over something that wasn't that large but That's instead good. you know we talk about it That's we good. pray about it and then again you defeat the enemy because pastor always says in ecclesiastes you know from ecclesiastes that a threefold cord is yes. not easily broken that's good Amen. and i think too that you know even as you were talking about you know prayer um you know as a husband and wife and when you're coming together uh, but that's really birthed from relationship. Right. Because what you understand is as a child of God, you don't want to come before God any kind of way or you won't come before him any kind of way. Right. And so you want to make sure that you've got things in order with him. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you have things in order with your spouse. Right. And so it allows your, your prayers not to be hindered. Right. Um, you, it allows uh, God to really move the way that he desires to move, right. you know, in the union. Um, because, again, you know, you're not uh, uh, on opposing teams, but you're on the, on the same team. You, you both want to win in this thing. Um, and so, again, it's keeping God first is, is really uh, the relationship uh, because again, the practical things alone won't do it. Right. Because let's just be real. You may be able to be good for a certain period of time. Right. But we're in this thing for the long haul. Right. And so it's the relationship with God. It's what God's word says uh, about you. What, it, what does that look like? Uh, having an honor and having a respect uh, for one another and valuing uh, one another. And, and all of that, of course, comes from, you know, your relationship with God. So praise God. Absolutely. 
Um, and also looking at your marriage, every couple that's been called by God, you know, husbands, you found your wife. Uh, God has put this thing together. That's good. Not only do you have assignments that God has placed on your lives uh, individually, right. but when you come together, you need to be seeking God to say, God, what have you called us to do? And it doesn't mean you're pastor and co-pastor. It could be. But what have you sanctioned us to do? Why did you bring us together? What are what are those strengths? Uh, what is that assignment? And be seeking. And, and maybe you just got married. Perfect. You know, you're hearing this message. Uh, let's go before God if you don't know what that call it is. Right. If you've been married for years and you've never earnestly asked God, God, why <laughs> did you bring this man in my life? Or yeah. why did you allow him to find me? Why are we together? Ask God so that you can be flowing in that purpose right. and in that assignment together. That's critically important. That's good. And, and and I know that you said you may have just gotten married or uh, I would I would speak, you know, even at this moment to those that are looking to get married. Yeah. That, you know, understand that when co-pastor referenced, you know, with the flesh, uh, understanding that uh, a, a part uh, of us uh, can be selfish. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have uh, the spirit of God. You have to have God operating in you um, because understanding when you come into a union, it's not all about you. It's not right. like Burger King. I think have it your way, um, but there's compromise. And so right. again, you need God because when you're having certain discussions, when you're talking about certain things, you may have been raised one way, they've been raised another way. Yeah. You know, one thing about an opinion, we understand everybody has one. <laughs> and so you have to be able um, to be able to come together um, to be able to communicate the way that you need to and doing it the way that God has ordained and orchestrated it. And I'm so glad you brought up singles. When women of God, even men of God, if that person that you are thinking about or thinking about you does not love God That's good. more than they love you, right. doesn't want to spend more time with God, That's you know, good. then they are concerned about how much they go. If they're on the phone with you all day long, <laughs> That's cool. when did they have that time with God? When did they had that devotion with, That's with God? Good. So making sure when, when you bring, when someone comes into your space as a single person, can I smell God on them? That's good. Can can do I hear God talk coming out of their mouths? And especially we as women of God, if I plan to submit to this person, I've got to trust the God into in them. That's and I'm good. not saying someone's gonna come and I mean, are they the pastor and they know all the scriptures? That's are good. they living it? Are they submitted to God? Are they uh, focused on their relationship and their love walk uh, with God? So just making sure. If you're coming into my space, I need to ensure that God is first for you. That's and I mean, pastor, I, I know pastor loves me, but God is first. <laughs> Hallelujah. He loves our children, but, but God, God is first. first. He sneaks away and just spends time with God. We could be sitting there enjoying ourselves, maybe watching a movie. But it, after a specific, you know, certain time, amount of time, it's just like he's in the bathroom. He's got his AirPods. He's listening to the word. And I appreciate that because one, I know it blesses my life, but more importantly, I know yeah. he loves God and I see it. You yeah. know, I see his love for God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I think, and, 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 and I know we're about to wrap, wrap up, um, you know, and, and for us as couples, you know, it's always great when you can glean from um, other men and women of God and great couples. Yeah. Um, I know for, for me, um, that, you know, I really didn't understand originally about uh, being a man of God or uh, loving my wife or even my children the way that I really needed to. And so we thank God for our connection uh, with Bishop and Co-Pastor Robinson. Um, he really uh, was able to show me what it was to truly be uh, a man of God, Amen. putting God first. Amen. And then the fruit of when you're putting God first how all these other aspects uh, in your life uh, could be blessed. And of course, marriage being one of them. Amen. Amen. And I remember co-pastor early, um, our early years in the ministry, she had a wow conference and 
I believe it was Pastor Cheryl Brady was there, um, or Bradley, I'm not sure if I have the name correct, but you get the point. She was there and she was ministering and something she said was, if you can't submit to the man you chose, how can you submit to the one who chose you? Referencing God, and we know God is not a man, but that now I mean, it just hit me like a ton of bricks because I was one of those like, what does it mean to submit? And, and we'll you know talk more about submission later. But the point I'm making is by making that connection with Bishop and co-pastor, um, gleaning from them, hearing that that one nugget, and then seeing co-pastor be so submitted, have her own space and her own presence, but being so submitted and honoring the man of God. Uh, you need that in your life. You need to see that example before you, um, and it, it's priceless. Yeah, and so uh, again, I know we're about to wrap up, and so uh, please never take it for granted uh, when you're able to be blessed to be able to see godly marriages, godly examples uh, actually set before you. Um, I Amen. know that, uh, Co-Pastor, I've enjoyed this time. Amen. Uh, we hope that you all have as well. Amen. Um, and we look to see you next time. And again, put, put God, God first. first.